Maybe you've heard the term contrastive learning, but have no idea what that is. In this case, I can hopefully bring some light into the shadow. So contrastive learning is a machine learning technique which allows you to learn a representation or general features from data without needing humanly provided labels, which is great. And it does so by the concept of grouping things which are similar close together and things which are dissimilar far apart from each other. That's very useful and applicable to a large set of different tasks. So even if your final task is a supervised learning task, such as classification or semantic segmentation in images, for example, you can still use contrastive learning to help you with your classification problem. So it can be used to learn an underlying representation without labels or in a two-step approach where we first learn a representation and then fine-tune it in a supervised way to the actual problem that we want to solve. Um, and it does so by saying two objects which are the same thing in the real world should be close to each other in this uh, low dimensional feature space and things which are different objects in the real world should be pushed away from each other. So let's make a concrete example. We have images for example and two images that we have contain cars and one image contains a human. Then in this feature space I want to make sure that the features generated by the car images are really close to each other and the image of a car and a human are further apart from each other. And these are then kind of called positive and negative pairs. So the same things, a positive pair should be close to each other in feature space and things which are different objects should be pushed away from each other. These are the negative examples. So how do we generate those pairs? That's probably the most tricky question here. We can do this in different ways. If we are working in a completely unsupervised fashion, we can use it using so-called augmentations. That means we pick out one data item, for example, an image, just to be concrete here, and um, then generate variations of that image. We could change the color, rotate the image, crop it, whatever, and say those two variations of the same anchor image are as a positive pair. That means they should be close to each other in feature space. There are other things we can do. If we know a bit about our data, maybe we have a camera on a mobile robot or a laser scan on a mobile robot that navigate through the environment and we have information about the pose, for example, from GPS. We can say things which are recorded at the same place should be close to each other in feature space, where things recorded at different places should be far away from each other. Or we can take time. If we have a sensor stream, we say things which happened close after each other in time should be similar, other things should be dissimilar. Okay, so how does it work together with our networks? So we take an arbitrary network, basically an encoder, such as a CNN, and can feed our raw input data into this network, and the network reduces it to some intermediate representation. Often in contrastive learning, we add a so-called projection head, some densely connected layers, in order to map it to the final feature space I'm doing the comparisons with. So how those network trained? For training a network, I typically need to define a loss function, so on my objective function to optimize. And um, there are different loss functions that you can use in contrastive learning. The simplest one is probably the contrastive loss. It just says, okay, if I have a positive pair, I actually want to push them close to each other, or if it's negative, I want to push them away from each other. You can also use a triplet loss, a more powerful loss, which basically handles three things at the same point in time. And then we are optimizing these networks using these pairs and the unlabeled data. So we can use contrastive learning in multiple settings. We can even use it in a supervised setting. So if you already have labels, we can take two images of cars or of humans and say, okay, we know these are humans from our labels. They should be close to each other in that feature space. More often, however, we use it in an unsupervised fashion where we use augmentations or this additional information that we have about our data. In this case, however, we typically need to invest a bit of brain power how we can do good hard negative mining. Hard negative mining means we need to find um, data items that produce objects in feature space which are close to each other, although in reality these are different objects. And I need to invest some brain power in order to do that well to come up with a system which works really well. And once you have done that, you can also use these networks for initializing a network as an initial guess for your weights for further downstream tasks such as semantic segmentation or image classification. For example, in our group we are using this often in order to um, bootstrap networks um, for semantic segmentation of LiDAR data. Annotating LiDAR data, 3D data, is typically quite hard and not as easy as annotating images and therefore we want to reduce the labeling effort. So what we do, we do a contrastive learning as a pre-training step to compute good weights, a good intermediate representation for our networks. And then only after that has been completed, we do the actual learning task and kind of starting with a good initial guess for the weights. And then typically 
achieve high-performing networks even with a substantially smaller set of labeled data. Okay, I hope that was useful and gave you an idea of what contrastive learning is and how you can use it in either a supervised or an unsupervised setting. Thank you very much.